despite all the damage that we've done to the ocean, it is incredibly resilient. And I try to remind people with my photographs that we still have time, that it's still worth doing, and there's still so much out there. All we have to do is protect it. My name is Nikolai, and I'm a video producer here at Mashable. I wanted to do a video series that looks at how we can create a more sustainable and more equitable future. My name is Christina Mittermeier. I grew up in Mexico. And when I went to university to study marine biology, the only type of marine biology career in Mexico at the time was in fisheries and aquaculture. So I went to university to learn how to industrially mine the resources of the ocean. And even if you're not a scientist, it doesn't take a lot to understand that the way that we catch food from the ocean is not only unsustainable, it is incredibly wasteful and destructive. We not only have extracted most of the valuable resources from the ocean, because 80% of the fisheries on this planet are already overexploited, we've also dumped unholy amounts of waste, sewage, fossil fuels, fertilizer, and most recently plastics into the ocean. So I feel this urgency to attack all of these issues at the same time. Of course, they're impacting women more than men, but I also feel that the solution may be in, you know, in a more feminine perspective. And if 50% of the population of the planet is not empowered and invited to be part of the solution, we're not going to solve it. And I want to think, you know, that the person who's capable of solving things like climate change may already be born. And that person may be in South America or in Africa, and she may not have access to education. You know, so we may ha we have to make sure that we are pulling women out of the shadows and into leadership roles. Why should people care about things that they don't think that they're connected to? Why should people be interested in species um, in places that they have never been to? And I think this is the main questions that you try to answer with your work. So I will ask you straight up, why? Like, I'm from Bulgaria, so why would a boy from Bulgaria care about the penguins? What is the connection? And I know that there is one because this is what your work shows. I'll tell you why. Because this is our little spaceship, just like your apartment is your spaceship or your house. We have just callously destroyed entire ecosystems and we have declared entire areas of our planet disposable and disregarded completely as if we were never going to use it in the future. But if we were to go with Elon Musk to space, I bet, Nikolai, that the minute you and I foot on that spaceship, we would get such a thorough briefing on all the systems that are going to take us on, on our space ride to Mars. You would know exactly where your waste goes and how much water you are allowed to take. And the thing that strikes me is here we are in our tiny little planet. It's a spaceship and it's the only one we have. And we have no idea how it works. Every once in a while when I talk about the beauty of the Arctic or polar bears, People will say to me, well, why should I care? You know, I'm never going to go to the Arctic. <laughs> and when we start losing one species after another, they're all connected because they, it all works together. That's the whole theory behind an ecosystem, right? It's all and it, this, the interactions is what creates life and the opportunity for more life. The picture that you paint is a dark picture. It's a picture of empty waters, or rather waters full of plastic and dirt and pollution. But if someone goes to your Instagram account, which is at MIDI, and, and looks at your feed, it's, it's a feed of just profound beauty. And I wonder, you know, over the last 30 years, let's say, from the 90s until today, you've witnessed the degradation of the natural world exacerbate, and yet you're still able to find beauty somehow how how do you do it and and why do you do it I, I i tell you first of all why i choose to depict things in a beautiful way and it's because when i was a scientist i was i thought that publishing scientific papers and explaining the facts with data was going to make a difference most people however don't speak scientific lingo and most of us feel really stupid when we're confront, confronted with data that we don't understand. Therefore, we reject it. You know, nobody wants to feel silly. When you show people a photograph, 
we all feel a lot more competent. First of all, because we all have a device now that makes us professional photographers. And so we speak this language really clearly. But secondly, it's um, just a recognition that on this planet, we have 4 billion years of evolutionary design perfection. Nothing goes to waste. The whole of nature is a circular economy where the things that one animal uses and then discards are used by another creature, another plant, and it goes on circular, circular, circular. Instead, we have chosen our systems to be linear. You take from nature, you utilize it, and then it's waste. It doesn't go back into a circular system. That comes from a colonial mindset that we carry with us for the last 200 years. Exploration, conquest and then exploitation. And what we have to do is get ourselves out of that mindset. The fact that, that we didn't start studying the ocean really until recently means that our baseline for what is healthy is very skewed. And there are very few places that are still pristine and beautiful, but I can give you an example of how quickly it bounces back. And, and this is an example from my home country of Mexico. In the 1990s, the fishermen of a very small community called Cabo Pulmo recognized that they had already overfished their little share of the ocean. And they pleaded with the government to create a marine protected area. And after much negotiation, an area was created. It's at 10 kilometers square, it's very small. But in just 14 years, the fish in that area, the biodiversity, the biomass of abundance of life, grew 400%. So today, if you go diving in Cabo Pulmo, the fish are not only incredibly plentiful, they're big. And big fish make more eggs and they have more sex. And so it's a, it's a very quick cycle where these big old fish that are capable of reproducing a lot start really rebounding. And then what happens is really interesting, Nikolai, because there's only so much space. So these fish, the, the, the little fish start moving out and that's where the fishermen can catch them. So creating these marine protected areas is almost like a fish bank. You know, you're only taking out the interest, the spillover that comes out. The capital is in the marine protected area. So when I first went to Cabo Pulmo and I saw, I mean, just big sharks, lots of stingrays, you know, big, big groupers, so tame because they're not afraid of people. You can almost go and touch them. I thought we have to tell the story and we have to make sure that other people know uh, because we need to accelerate the process of protection. I know that you've written in your in your feed that you cho you want to choose a different future, a future that is about people and planet over profit and power. So I ask you now, um, because the series is, you know, the future we want, what is the future that, that you want? This colonial mindset that we have is coupled with a broken relationship with nature. People are afraid of, you know, entering nature because it's icky or because it's dirty or because it's scary. And that separation is really dangerous. Because if we don't understand where we live and we don't understand where we have come from, we can never know where we're going. My compass is guided by science. There was a paper published last year and I really love the title. It's by Dr. Carlos Duarte and about 20 of my other favorite marine scientists. And they set out to write a scientific outline for how do we regenerate life on the ocean. It's a recipe. And they separate it into six wedges. And these are six actions, six groups of actions that we need to undertake all at the same time. We don't have a choice to pick one or the other. They are, we need to create more protection, not just on the ocean, but on land as well. We need to protect species. And that includes, we have to stop this traffic of wildlife, taking animals from deep in the jungle and putting them in markets where they can spread disease and cause pandemics that we're living right now. We have to regenerate habitats, all those coral reefs, all those mangrove forests, all the rainforests that we have cut down. We have to make huge investments now to regenerate them. We have to stop plastic pollution. So important. And uh, I'm so interested in learning about uh, alternatives like seaweed um, derived plastic. And then the final one is we really have to tackle climate change. And that means we have to start making some tough choices about where energy comes from. But it is this mindset of we can't change, we cannot transition, it's too difficult to shift, that prevents us from really embracing a future that is brighter for everybody.